When you think of tablets, the first word that comes to mind is obviously the iPad. Now, obviously, there are the Android and Windows tablets, and you'll find a thousand different videos on the internet about what's better, but you won't find a thousand different videos on this. This is actually the Fire Tab Duo. There's a reason behind the name, I'll get to it. But the special thing about this tablet is that this is a Linux tablet. I mean, I never tried a Linux tablet before, so I wanted to see the full potential of Linux on a tablet. Try out different distros, Linux apps. And after using this, I can tell you that this is actually something interesting. To give you an idea, this tablet runs native Linux apps, Android apps, you can sideload APKs on this, and you can even use this as a portable Linux system. How awesome is that? I mean, by default, this comes with Fide's own OS called Fide OS, thus the name Fide Tab. And in my first try itself, this OS reminded me of another very popular OS. And I think you must have guessed it. Just look at the app drawer or the quick settings toggles or the lock screen. Yeah, this is basically Chrome OS with one important difference. There are no Google apps or services on this OS. So no Chrome, no Chrome Web Store, no Play Store. This is more stock than stock Android. It is the cleanest and the smoothest Chrome OS experience I have ever had. And it's probably because there are no Google services running in the background bogging down the system. I mean, the tablet boots up to the home screen after shutdown in less than 10 seconds, which is very fast. And the performance is surprising because the specs of this tablet are strictly okay. Yeah, this is not the most powerful tablet out there. And even the benchmarks showed in the scores here are more like scores from the Snapdragon 845 from 2018. There's even eMMC storage, which seems a bit outdated. But even with these specs, this tablet is very speedy, be it the UI or even the apps. Yes, apps. What would a tablet be if not for the apps? Look, I know you're thinking, how do you install apps on this Linux tablet? Well, apps are important and the makers know that. I mean, that's the reason this OS has its own store of apps. And there's even an app to quickly set up the Play Store and download Android apps. And since this is based on Chromium, Android apps run flawlessly. Also, this is a Linux tablet, so it'd be weird if it did not run Linux apps, right? Yeah, that is true, and this obviously does run Linux apps. I'm not a big Linux user, but I did try out GIMP on the tablet and it worked out fine. Now, running Linux apps is one thing, but how about running a full-fledged Linux distro on this tablet? Well, that's actually one of the big USPs of this tablet. Yes, you can actually install Linux distros on it. I'm talking about distros like Ubuntu or Arch Linux or Debian. Heck, you can even install AOSP Android on it. Now, to be honest, this tablet is still in its early days and the developers are still trying out different distros on this tablet. But I did try an early build of Debian and it had its issues, but it was pretty good. I mean, the touchscreen wasn't working, everything was in Chinese, but the fact that it was running properly on this tablet is what was promising to me. I mean, we all know how strong the Linux community is, so I'm hoping to see better builds with time. But yeah, this, even with its issues, is definitely promising. Look, this is sort of a prototype Linux tablet, but this is available at around 50K. And at that price, Linux and its flexibilities are kind of the big USP. But I like the other features of this tablet and the attention to detail. For example, you don't get a keyboard kickstand case in the box in most tablets. And this is a keyboard that's pretty good and even has a touchpad on it. That's all, this is a massive 12.3 inch tablet with a 2K display that first of all is bright and sharp and has good colors. And this is also a touchscreen with stylus support. And guess what? This comes with the stylus in the box. To compare the keyboard and the stylus combo for the iPad 10 Gen would cost you around 35,000 rupees. So yeah, thumbs up for this. Now, if you're thinking maybe they've cut corners in the design, well, it doesn't look like it. The metal design looks nice and premium and you get features like a fingerprint scanner embedded in the power button, stereo speakers, and you also get USB-C charging. So this Linux tablet is not the prototype tablet I was expecting. It's actually close to the real deal. I also say that because I've been using it for casual work or even things like casual gaming. And this seems like a device I can actually use. Look, long story short, iPads are good. In fact, they are great, but they are a bit limited when it comes to advanced users or pro users who like to tinker. Also, iPads are kind of becoming the monopoly in the tablet market, and that's never really good. It honestly makes me think we need stronger competition for the iPads, and this is where this Linux tablet has got me intrigued. Think about it, it sort of brings the best of both worlds. You can use it as a casual tablet to watch movies, draw, or just use a browser, or you can use it as an advanced Linux system, try out different distros, Linux apps, Android apps. There are endless possibilities of what you can do with a Linux tablet. But the most important question is this, would you buy a Linux tablet that costs 50,000 rupees and is more mainstream, more refined, instead of the old tried and tested iPad? Comment down below. Also, give this video a like if you found this video interesting. Share this video with your Linux fans and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. 
These are three brand new WhatsApp features that you need to try right now. Polls in group chats. Yes, not a lot of people know, but...